Straight ahead on your East Texas news, a Lufkin woman was caught not once but twice carrying two gallon-sized bags of marijuana. We'll give you the full rundown on her arrest. Plus, in the hot seat, a few East Texas candidates answer some tough questions ahead of Election Day. Your East Texas news starts right now. Live in high definition. You're watching KTRE 9 News, your East Texas news leader. Good evening. Thank you for watching us tonight. I'm John Carlos Estrada. We begin tonight with the repeat offender. A Lufkin woman was arrested twice in just two days for carrying an illegal substance. Take a look at her. Yolanda Whitaker was arrested Monday after dumping a gallon-sized bag full of marijuana in a daycare trash can. You'd think she might have learned her lesson, but that's not the case. As East Texas News 9's Blair Ledette found out. It all started here. Authorities were responding to a drug activity in progress call. The suspect, Yolanda Whitaker, was in a silver Buick parked in McCoy's lumber lot. She was reportedly packaging what looked to be marijuana. Shortly after, an officer noticed a vehicle matching the description of Whitaker's. The suspect and the driver, Frederick Ruth, pulled over near West Frank and Hill Street. Whitaker then pulled into this daycare and into the building. Authorities say that she tried to hide a gallon-sized bag of marijuana in the restroom. This wouldn't be Whitaker's last run-in with authorities. Officers arrested Whitaker and her accomplice for possession of marijuana in a drug-free zone. Whitaker posted a $1,500 bond shortly after, but Whitaker wasn't done. The next day, authorities pulled her over in a routine traffic stop near Kelty's and Wilson Street. She was in a different Buick riding with someone else, Vlanice Arlene. After the two let the window down, authorities had probable cause to search the vehicle because of the heavy marijuana odor. Once again, authorities reported catching Whitaker with a gallon-sized bag of marijuana. Officers arrested both suspects, Arlene for possession of drug paraphernalia, and Whitaker for the second time in two days for possession of marijuana. Blair Lede, KTRE, East Texas News 9. Now, Whitaker is currently being held at the Angelina County Jail. Her bond has not been set at this time. And there's a group in East Texas lobbying to decriminalize marijuana. It's called Northeast Tex Normal, and it's fighting to end marijuana prohibition in the Lone Star State. The group says they want laws similar to Colorado marijuana laws, and members are attempting to get dialogue started on the issue. We've got some big things coming in the 2015 legislative cycle. Um, we're working on decriminalization as well as hopefully a medical marijuana bill. Um, it's an issue that's very important to all of us. Everyone in Texas has someone that's been negatively affected by marijuana laws in Texas, and it's important that we all get active. Now, Northeast Normal has scheduled a meeting for November 8th in Nacogdoches at the back door located behind the annex on North Street. And a startling sight for East Texas commuters this morning as a cattle hurdler overturned early this morning, killing 40 cows. Police say it happened around 3.30 a.m. seen here in the westbound lane of I-20 in Gregg County near mile marker 593. DPS troopers say the driver fell asleep at the wheel running off the roadway. Then the trailer hit the side. Many workers tried to cut openings in the trailer to save the uninjured cattle. And the driver and passenger were hospitalized with minor injuries. Only 35 of the 75 cattle in the trailer were saved. Save the ones that's, uh, that's still alive and don't have no injuries. And uh, it's a time factor. There's approximately 75 head of cattle. The cattle um, stay contained inside the trailer. Now again, take a look at this location. Police say you can only travel on one lane right now on I-20 in Gregg County near mile marker 593. Crews are still working to remove the wreckage and the dead cattle. And East Texas legislators were put on the hot seat today by the highly respected web newspaper, the Texas Tribune. The interviewer was the media outlet's co-founder, Evan Smith. East Texas News News Donna McCollum tells us the former Texas Monthly editor-in-chief is respected by his guests even when he's asking the tough questions. A bunch of new people running state. Evan Smith wants Texans to be informed about public policy. He respectfully puts politicians in the hot seat before their constituents. Do you support that? Direct questioning that doesn't always receive a direct answer. Representative, you didn't actually answer my question. 
In a traveling series, the Texas Tribune engages elected officials to go on the record about matters of statewide concern. We started in 09 as a reaction to the decline in coverage of public policy and politics. And it's good for East Texas to hear from these guys say, this is what I believe. With not a note in hand, Smith skillfully quizzes Representatives Travis Clardy and Senator Robert Nichols on health care, education, and transportation. Why did you only appropriate a billion cents? Why not actually pay the <coughs> tab? Justification came from Nichols, the transportation chair. The senator notes his answers will be heard. The entity that political gurus as well as members uh, watch and read, I check it just about every day. In just five years, the nonprofit media outlet earned its reputation of fairness by members of all parties. The former Texas Monthly editor even accepts quickness near to his own. Why haven't we solved the problem pre-Obama? I wasn't in the legislature. <laughs> Good one, Senator. Smith's pursuit for the truth is timely. Ben Bradley, the Washington Post editor famous for overseeing the Watergate investigation, died Tuesday. The journalist of Smith's generation said the pursuit of truth changes our life. It did for Smith. And at the end of the day, the pursuit of truth is the most noble work that you can do. Donna McCollum, KTRE, East Texas News 9. Now, the Texas Tribune presented a live stream video of today's appearance at SFA. The newspaper can be read and viewed free anytime on the web. And we've got an update tonight on the Lufkin man who calls himself past Dr. Geronimo. Today, Douglas McCoy made an appearance in court. Now, you remember earlier this year, the 51-year-old was arrested on a third-degree felony charge of tampering with government document. Now, McCoy became popular in Angelina County after he made several attempts to camp out outside the court house and the sheriff's office at today's hearing his sister said he had been using synthetic marijuana in place of his prescribed medication and McCoy's lawyer says he suffers from paranoia ideation and delusions about Angelina County law enforcement now the decision will be made after the judge determines his competency and we have a few updates on Ebola crisis affecting the country today now today Governor Rick Perry says Texas is aiming to stop diseases like Ebola through the creation of a new therapies and vaccines. Perry was in College Station today visiting the Texas A&M National Center for Therapeutics Manufacturing. This facility is one of the state-of-the-art vaccine and therapeutic manufacturing facilities at the center, which is said to have the capacity to rapidly manufacture vaccines, plays a crucial role in preventing a catastrophic outbreaks. We're aiming to stop diseases like Ebola through the creation of new therapies and vaccines. It's the culmination of a decade of work, hard work. Now the center is on track to meet its mission of meeting the nation's preparedness in response to public health threats like the flu or any other disease outbreak like Ebola. It's also one of the key, key three key installations contracted by the federal government as part of the National Vaccine Response Center. And meanwhile today, the new White House Ebola czar official reported for duty today. Ron Klain is tasked with coordinating the Obama administration's response to the outbreak. Now, first up on his agenda, several meetings, including one with the president with President Obama this afternoon. Now, Klain is former chief of staff to Vice President Joe Biden and a former Vice President Al Gore. He is currently head of an investment group. And all eyes were in Canada today as a Canadian soldier and a gunman were are dead after two shootings in the capital city of Ottawa. Now, CNN reports that Michael Zihoff Badu has been identified by Canadian officials as the suspect shooter, suspected shooter in today's shooting rampage in Ottawa. Now, two sources tell CNN that Badu was converted, was a convert to Islam and has a history of drug use before he converted. This morning, shots rang out outside Parliament and at the Canadian War Memorial. Here's what President Obama told reporters earlier today about the attack. Uh, obviously, we're all shaken by it, uh, but um, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we're standing side by side with Canada during this difficult time. Ottawa's police constable says that there was one more person involved in the shootings, but no one is in custody yet. Now, coming up on your East Texas News, the Texas Forestry Association celebrates a huge anniversary in Lufkin. We'll take you to the Big Bash. Plus, it's a shot of whiskey you might have to think twice about taking, and it might hurt your wallet a little bit. 
And coming up, I'll let you know just how much longer this beautiful weather will stick around. Plus, a unique astronomical event takes place tomorrow. I'll tell you what it is coming up next in your Storm Tracker forecast. Well, it was another fabulous fall day across East Texas. You know, we haven't seen any rain dating back to last Monday, so we're already working on about 10 days worth of just fantastic weather. And outside this evening, we've got clear skies. Of course, the sunset now is around 640, so in about another 30 minutes, the sun will be setting. Our days are getting shorter, but that's a sign that fall is really set in, and it's also a sign of the cooler weather that's on the way. In fact, outside right now at 6 o'clock, we're weather watcher Larry Grable and Trey right now sitting at 76 degrees, so we're starting to cool down pretty nicely out there this evening. Uh, Paul French and Wood Lakes at 76. We've got 71 from Kit Miller and Central. The SFA Weather Observatory in Nacogdoches is at 74. We've got 74 in Huntington and the same reading also in San Augustine. By the way, we got a unique astronomical event taking place tomorrow. It's the partial solar eclipse, and that's when the moon moves in between the sun and the Earth, so it's not going to be a complete solar eclipse, but again, and if you keep this in mind, it will be starting around 5 o'clock our time tomorrow and then peak around 5.50 p.m. So right before newscast here tomorrow night. And keep in mind, you don't want to look directly into the sunlight. If you're going to want to gaze at this, you want to make sure you have a filter that's been approved or you can do a pinhole projector through a uh, notebook card or paper, something along those lines to look at it. But the unique thing is the sun will have the appearance almost of a crescent shape, almost like a crescent moon because it's going to be somewhat covered. So again, kind of a unique event going on tomorrow. And again, you should be able to see it barring the clouds aren't moving through the sun at the appropriate time. In fact, you look at satellite and radar composite today, you can see we do have some rain out in the central and western part of the state. In fact, a little bad of showers moving up through the Red River. Also another batch here in northern Mexico and southwest Texas. There's actually a disturbance that's going to be moving to the northeast, but as we've been talking about the past couple of days, this area of cloud covering rain, as it hits the dry, more stable air in our part of the state, those showers are going to fizzle quickly. The disturbance is going to weaken, so all we're expecting tomorrow is just some passing clouds, and that's generally going to be about it. In fact, notice here with future catch, you can see a veil of clouds moving through late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and then again off and on throughout the course of the day on Thursday. So we'll call it partly cloudy. Again, intermittent clouds throughout the course of the day, but no moisture, no rain expected to fall from those clouds. So it should be staying on the dry side, but because we haven't seen as many clouds, we'll get a little bit of a makeover with our sky conditions here coming up for tomorrow. So for tonight, we're down to 55 degrees, another cool, crisp night on tap for East Texas. Again, a few clouds rolling in by daybreak, but we'll start your day tomorrow in the mid 50s. By lunchtime, we'll be up around 72 degrees and then topping out around 79. So I would say a few degrees cooler than today, but still very nice nonetheless with a mix of sun and clouds. Friday, we have sunshine galore once again and other pleasant days. We are up in the low 80s. By the weekend, this is when we start to see some changes take place. We're going to see afternoon highs start to really warm up. In fact, we're getting back into the upper 80s and also the humidity will be returning as well as our winds start to kick in out of the south at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. So the humidity has been gone for a while. You know it's going to come back eventually and it does look like by Sunday and Monday we'll have more humid conditions and the next chance of rain won't be here until next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with the next weather system coming in next week, John will be able to get at least a little bit of rain out of the event. So I'm still getting used to the area. So I've been getting uh, into my car in the day yeah. and turning up the AC and then leaving here at, at night and having to turn on the, the heater because it's just like ying, it's like up and down. So I'm enjoying the weather now, now though. It's very nice. Oh, great. And by the way, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you very much. You Thanks, bet. Brad. All right. Uh, the Texas Forestry Association is celebrating their 100 year anniversary by hosting their annual convention right here in Lufkin. More than 500 people are registered for the event. Conservationists from across the state and even some as far away as Virginia have come to learn about the most important issues the forestry industry is facing right now. We're talking about biomass, uh, the pellet mills, um, the importance of certification, the importance of the small landowners to be, uh, get their wood certified, their tree farm certified. 
Now, many attendees received awards for their education, excellence in design and communication. Now, the conference runs through Thursday at the Lufkin Civic Center. And if you're a fan of food, then a food truck event in Austin may be for you. It's a food truck taste-a-thon aptly named Truck by Truck West, which kicked off this week. You can buy a one, two, or six-day wristband, which lets you get free selected food samples at each place. At the end of each week, tasters vote on which place they like the best. The one with the most votes wins $10,000. A portion of money from the wristband sales goes to keep Austin fed. And if you got an extra money burning a hole in your wallet, there's a Houston bar that will happily help you spend it. You're taking a look at the pride of 1978, one of the rarest whiskeys in the world. A single shot will set you back $750 at Reserve 101 in Houston. Now the bar gives away samples, samples Monday, their first day selling the drink. The liquor was reportedly aged 19 years and extra matured for an additional 15 years. It was bottled in 2012. Now, a former Hudson Hornet is getting ready for Game 2 of the World Series. Coming up next in sports, you'll hear from our hometown player, Brandon Belt, about the Giants' win over the Royals. Judge hearing East Texas NFL star Adrian Peterson's child abuse case will not be removed after today's recusal hearing. The decision not to recuse Judge Kelly case from the hearing was made by retired Tarrant County Judge Jeff Walker. The lawyers wanted to remove case from the hearing after he called out attorneys on both sides for wanting attention from the media through this. Case later apologized for a statement. The next matter on the table is to decide whether or not to arrest Peterson again for violating the conditions of his $15,000 bond when he admitted to a court worker administering his drug test that he had smoked weed. Peterson's child abuse case has a tentative trial date set for December 1st. Former Hudson Hornet Brandon Bell and his teammates with the San Francisco Giants were victorious last night in Game 1 of the World Series. The Giants won 7-1 over the Kansas City Royals. San Francisco jumped on the lead early when Hunter Pence smashed a two run homer in the top of the first to make it 3-0. Belt was one for four on the night, getting struck out twice, walked once, and he did get a run for the Giants. Here's what Belt had to say about last night's game and continuing the series with the Royals. I think that's something this team lives for. Um, we love playing in front of our home, home team, our home crowd, and them getting loud. We love playing in front of the away crowd and them getting silent. So um, they, got, they got silent early. Um, hopefully we can keep on doing that. Uh, I think it's it's always there, and it, and it grows every time we, we score runs. But like I said, I mean, you get to this point in the playoffs, every team's real good, and they can all come back. So you got to be on your toes and play good baseball. And as we mentioned last night, Belt wasn't the only East Texan there. Some Hudson Hornets skipped class yesterday. A group of Hudson administration staff members, that is, made the 11-hour trip to support Belt. And they sent in these photos of the game last night. You can see Belt there. He was lined with his teammates, number nine for San Fran. Hudson Middle School principal Richard Crenshaw was at the game last night. And Crenshaw started coaching Belt when he was in eighth grade. And here's what he had to say about last night's game and Belt's performance. He was really loud at first, but as soon as uh, Pence hit that first home run, that kind of clocked him down a whole lot. Uh, he did what he needed to do. You know, he got that first at bat, got a hit, uh, following a three-run home run. He got a, got a walk, and of course he struck out two times, but uh, he still, you know, he'll put a run across the board. So uh, it's kind of these guys got to come through. It's, it's, you know, it's a timing thing with a, you know, with a pro player, it seems like, and the one guy's going to get hot, but as long as they do their job and pull out a win, uh, that's all they're after. And all those Hudson staff members are still in Missouri for game two, which is tonight. So be sure to join me tonight at 10, where I'll give you an update on how our East Texas native is doing. That wraps it up for Sports at 6. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Before we leave you tonight at 6, it's almost dinner time. But how about dining up in the air? We'll take a look at these Chinese diners experiencing the high life. Their dining room is hoisted 66 feet in the air by a crane. It holds eight people and it held it's held on by four ropes that can hold four tons each. It's part of a marketing scheme. You can get a free meal if you view a new apartment complex. Now, I'm afraid of heights, <laughs> so I don't think I would be up for this. But what do you guys think? I would think you guys, I would be up for it. 66 feet up in the air. I think I need like a little secure, like, 
bungee thing. I don't yeah. know. Just to make sure that I, if I did fall, I'd be okay. I like it. Yeah. A little risky. Yeah. I like it. I know. <laughs> what about weather? Is it a nice time for, to have oh, dinner yeah. outside? Yeah, great. Another great evening yeah, outdoors. Your favorite adult beverage or anything of your liking is going to be good to go here because it'll be 72 by 7, 63 degrees by 10. Very nice overall. Thank you. We'll see you back here at 10. Let the news follow you. From exclusive web content to text and email alerts, get your news wherever you are. Sponsored by Loving Toyota.